please note that this video contains spoilers for the subject and the series and or franchise leading up to this entry. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. Jason Bourne movie thoughts. I am going to start with, I'm going to dive right into the notes I took during the movie. So Nikki dies almost immediately and it's just, they didn't have to bring it back. You know, they could have just left it, yeah, that the character didn't need to be Nikki at all. It barely seems to bother Jason that it happens. It's it's similar to the the in the third movie where you know the the reporter dies and you know I want to say it's Rod Hilton in his abridged script points out you know it doesn't seem to bother Jason. Although to be fair, it wasn't Jason's fault. The for one thing, the reporter stopped doing what he said, which I don't think is like a big problem. It's just, it makes sense for him to, I bought that he would behave that way. But, you know, that's one thing. So, you know, Jason couldn't have done anything about that. And another is, they were already hunting him. They didn't start hunting him because Jason was there. They hunted him because the buffoon didn't realize that Echelon existed. And he mentioned... Right, it was Blackbriar or Treadstone, he said, over the phone. Yeah. But the... But, nevertheless, you know, Nikki is killed, and almost, it's almost the first thing that happens. In the, you, you gotta love, they, they do barely give her, you know, they, they let her do a little bit of physical. You know, she, like elbows one of the guys at the hank of the it didn't even look to me like he was trying to do anything towards her it seemed like they just really wanted her to you know yeah they just wanted to give her something you know i, I get she sprays in and sets it on fire but didn't look like the guy was trying to do anything at all but yeah you know again rod hilton points out in his bridge script born ultimatum Nikki is the one person who hasn't been shot to death. He says shot in the head. I'm not sure Marie was shot in the head. I think, anyway, her head looked immaculate for someone who may have been shot in the head. Anyway, shot to death for no, you know, who, someone who came into contact with Bourne. You know, the thing about it, Pamela Landian barely met him in person at all, but, you know, Conklin and so on and so forth, yeah. But then, in this, she does get shot. And, yeah. Although, to be fair in this, it's because of what she does, not because she knows him. But, you know, they married Nikki. It's it's really messed up. The... Yeah, they... they and, and it's also like, if she hadn't done... The, the little movement she did there at the end, he wouldn't have been able to get the, the USB. And that also brings up, you know, he kills, Cassell kills like three people just on that roof alone. It just seems like, I don't know what the big problem would, would have been if he had just like stunned them with something. If he had come up and like, I don't know, I guess stun guns, it's more like one person at a time. And I guess darts might you know, maybe trace. I don't know, maybe I, I, I probably. This might not be part of that, but I do for sure play too much Splinter Cell Blacklist. But in that, you can just throw a sleeping gas bomb. Couldn't he have done something like that? So it's just they wake up and they don't know what happened and that's it. You know, instead of three dead bodies, if the helicopter had gotten there much sooner, he wouldn't have been able to shoot Nikki. 
it's just and and then you know oh, we gotta ruin Heather. Let's shoot both teams. I realized they wanted to stop. They needed to make sure that they could kill Russian guy who's now English and playing a completely different character. Ruski for short. They wanted to be sure they could shoot Ruski and her men might have gotten in the way of that. Again, would it have been impossible to just maybe block them off somehow? Or, yeah, temporarily neutralize them. You Killing them just means there are bodies. That's not going to at all raise eyebrows. Again, hypothetically, he throws a sleeping gas bomb, and they just they wake up and they don't know what happened. Doesn't that cause fewer problems? But, yeah. And we find out that Jason, you know, David's, yeah, Webb Sr., the the yeah he create he wrote treadstone or you know later we find out who he didn't work or, anyway yeah he you know he he was he knew about the program if nothing else and there is yeah, he, he threatened the CIA to, with revealing the program, and you know he didn't want them to turn his son into a killer. And then he was blown up. I love the... It's not... They don't quite call it Crimson Jihad, but it is this really ridiculous... Let me think. What was it again? It was the... The Islamic terrorist martyrs or something like that it's you know it's it's just it's kind of like it's kind of like saying that my the the brand of refrigerator that I currently own is the refrigeration for cooling of food it's just it couldn't be less descriptive it's or more purely descriptive, you know, there's no, where's, where's the soul in that name, where's the, where's the branding, it's just, yeah, and, you know, we realize that the person who killed his father, the, you know, because the dummy was, you know, he didn't get himself further, far enough away, and he didn't cover his face, so, yeah, it was Cassell, so at the end of the movie, we have him avenging the father that we didn't even know he needed to avenge before this movie. So the movie literally creates a conflict out of nothing and then solves it in the way that the other movies went out of their way not to solve it. Jason Bourne specifically makes sure to kill someone because of something that, you know, he's gone out of his way to avoid killing anyone. He, he shows clear disgust when he kills someone in movies two and three, and now he... I'm not saying that there was a lot he could really have done to avoid killing Kissel, but nevertheless, the movies wants there to be some kind of catharsis there. You know, again, the movie didn't need to set up that there was this, and you know, when you think about it, obviously it wasn't going to turn out to be Islamic terrorists, because the movie, you know, the, the longer the movie goes, the, the more we should really realize it's not going to be Islamic terrorists because we haven't met any character that could be that Islamic terrorist. And, yeah, the more of the movie passes, the less of the movie they would have to deal with. The, so, obviously, it's going to turn out to be a character we already know, not an Islamic terrorist, and who else would it then be? You know, so really, you should be able to figure out. I I didn't, but going in, you know, and I suppose that, but you know, Born does get to kill the man who murdered his father. 
and you know there at the end we have this you know oh let me think about it and that's supposed to be the big you know uh, I you know I trick you because then he reveals I heard what you said in the car you know I heard the gossip you spread about me so you know and and I guess he gets the star of it and he gets to show up see I let you meet me after that because I'm so certain that you won't be able to kill me that I'm not afraid to meet you face to face even after I know that you think you you know yeah so okay there's that and then he's just still out there he didn't re when the movie started and also you know just based on some of the trailers you might think okay so the hack that means that they're gonna spread this new information but no nothing has been done that by the end of the movie means that Iron Hand will be for sure stopped you know nothing has been done that will for sure mean that the they'll do less of these programs it's just that the the guy who was in charge you know Tom Lee Jones was the really ruthless one who was getting all these people killed and such and now it's gonna be Heather instead but at the end she turns out to be something of a company man herself so company person so yeah what's what did we accomplish here the movie like I said the movie creates a conflict that didn't need to you know in the in the first three each time it feels like I mean in the first movie you didn't expect them to frame Jason Bourne but them framing Jason Bourne it's you know the the ultimately it means that they then kill Marie and that he you know then comes back for them but ultimately it's not like he was on best on good terms with them before that he you know sooner or later he probably would have been pulled back in somehow you know they would keep pulling him back in and then the third movie yeah sooner or later someone was going to find out and start writing about it and that person would both become a target you know that's the thing in in the third one it's ridiculous that it's it's so convenient that somehow Bourne meets the reporter at the same time as the CIA start trying to kill the reporter but other than that yeah, sooner or later a reporter was going to find out a bunch and start writing. It's also really wild that they, it was like the third time that he, the third article he wrote about him. I get that he hadn't said Blackbriar into a phone before then, but were they really not checking major newspapers for stories involving the name Jason Bourne? But anyway, yeah, at the end of the day, it makes sense. And yeah, you know, he, even if they hadn't killed this reporter, Bourne would still be trying to find the source. So, yeah, at the end of the day, this is the one movie where they create something, you know, and then just bear, like, yeah, the movie says, you know, something important, there's something important with his father, and we'll find out what that thing was, and then he kills the guy who killed his father and that's it there's no further development there's nothing interesting there and yeah at the end of the day the door is open for another movie with the Matt Damon with with Jason Bourne not just a Bourne movie with which could be with Renner but and it's just what's the point where where do you yeah where do you go from here and where did they really think they were going anywhere interesting in this? It's just okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to give it the benefit of the doubt. It was not them who killed one of our citizens. It was us. We did this because we. Okay, I suppose you could say that the the you know people who did 9/11 were you know largely Saudis and then Bush made sure to get the you know the, these Saudis out of 
country and you could say that you know like I, I forget what the exact quote is but I wanna say that Michael Moore puts it maybe he was thinking which of my friends betrayed me I guess you could say that that's what they're referring to that it was yeah you know and then in general you know obviously Osama bin Laden himself the CIA gave him weapons a few decades back so you know okay fine but then it doesn't really go anywhere with that and yeah it's it's just it's not that interesting and if you if you want to make that point that really didn't need to be a born movie the 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 first three I would say needed to be born movies these were stories that would that were best told through born and this just isn't But I do suppose that is relatively relevant. The, the way the fourth movie had a drone strike on American citizen who hadn't been convicted of anything. I swear in at least one trailer it looked like Jason fired a submachine gun from a motorcycle. In this, it was only a pistol, so it's possible they just edited. Our, you know, because if you fire a submachine gun from a motorcycle, you're not going to have anything resembling accuracy. A pistol, I think he just fires the one shot. I just barely buy it. Also because it's, if I recall, it's not very far, you know, distance. And the trailer also looks like that fireworks -y kind of shot is fired at Bourne or something, which in this, if... If I recall correctly, it wasn't. And, you know, he... It's almost like he dodges a rifle shot. Again, it, it mainly in the trailer. And again, I don't know how that's supposed to work. But at least we didn't get another parkour agent like four. The T-1000 kind of, you know, taking chest, chest shots and not even slowing down. But, you know, when he goes off the edge, grabs the line, swings down, like I say in the review, he doesn't actually swing down the whole way because that would be ridiculous. But nevertheless, he still survives this, and it's just, yeah, it's going too far. And, you know, in one trailer, it seemed like he was ramming other cars with his when the big thing was, before it was that he used small regular cars to make sure not to kill anybody. But, you know, it turns out to be Cassell. And like I said, in an early trailer, it looked like it was him. And later trailer revealed that it wasn't him. Maybe they reacted to feedback on that first trailer or something. And maybe they just realized that during a chase, cars crash. You know, it affects traffic. They, didn't, they clearly didn't know that in the second movie. And also in the trailer, he fires a shotgun from the driver's seat. What is this, Terminator 1? one of my all-time favorite movies, not just action movies, not just robot movies, not just science fiction movies, or time travel movies, one of my all-time favorite movies, but a completely different type of action film than this entire series. But then again, I didn't see him use a shotgun ever in the film, so yeah, I just, I don't know, how, or I can't think of anywhere in the film that would have and when he got in the car, I was like, okay, but where's the shotgun? When When's that coming in? Because I knew from the trailer, this is where he... And that never happened. And again, I don't see where it was edited out from. It's, it's another one of these things where the trailer just really... It has scenes that are not in the film, or scenes that play out differently than in the film. I've reviewed other parts of this franchise, the links are in the description box. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.